Hey everybody, it's low carbon keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger bringing you, as always, keto without the crazy. Now, do have a couple of announcements before I get to the topic. First, thank you so much for the outpouring of support that you showed me and of course the memory of Dr. Sarah Hallberg. I am floored. I would say I'm speechless, except I'm speaking to you right now, so I guess I'm not speechless, but truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, I, I'm so moved by your words of love and support and um, fellowship, togetherness, it's just thank you. Those two words feel like they fall so far short, but I'm really just so moved and touched by your kindness and your love and support and um in the comments on the video and then of course some of you reached out to me privately however you expressed it thank you it it means more than i can say um okay that's number one number two check out all the links below i am um sp no i'm not speaking i'm attending the metabolic health summit in santa barbara in may and from now until April 10th, let me double check, April 10th, you can vote, I'll put a link, they give awards, and the book I wrote with Dr. Westman, End Your Carb Confusion, is in the top running for best keto book, I mean, of, of the year past, best keto book. So um, we are up against two other books. Please vote, vote for End Your Carb Confusion. You can actually vote once a day, every day. So get on there every day and vote for End Your Carb Confusion. And Dr. Westman himself is up for best or top keto researcher. Now he's up against some big names. He's up against Ben Bigman, whom I also adore. And I honestly forget who else, let's see if I can look real quick i'll tell you who he's up against oh dr Aronica. so he's uh, he's up against some dynamite people but um vote vote for end your car from fusion vote for dr westman top researcher if you are so inclined third announcement before i get into business finally i did a video a while back on lipedema and many of you know what lipedema is many of you have probably never heard of lipedema if you've never heard of it check out the video I am speaking at a virtual lipedema and lymphedema conference. It's the ketogenic revolution for lipedema and lymphedema. And lipedema and lymphedema are not the same thing, but many women have both at the same time, so it only makes sense to do a virtual keto symposium for both. I'm speaking, Dr. Westman is speaking, Megan Ramos is speaking, Dr. Brett Schur, um, I think Ken Berry is speaking a whole bunch of other names that you know that I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, why can't I, I like have to check my phone for all these details that I should remember. Um, oh, Siobhan Huggins, um, Dr. Brian Lenski, you know, Siobhan is, she works along with Dave Feldman at the Cholesterol Code. So lots of people speaking and lots of people I haven't even mentioned. I think Paul Mason is speaking. So um, it is online, so you can do it from anywhere in the world and I'll put a link. So links to everything below on to the topic um how much salt do you need on keto salt or sodium is kind of a big deal and i will link probably to, to the video that you should watch but this one's probably going to be shorter i did a video, a video a while back called something like what kind of salt is best for keto and i went through oh the himalayan pink salt the celtic salt the smoked salt the iodized non-iodized this that today i kind of want to talk about how much salt do you need on keto and depending on your situation the answer is probably more than you think you do the answer might be a lot more than you think you do. Some of you out there need amounts of salt that horrify you, that you, you honestly think like no, no human could possibly need this much salt. Like this, this has to be dangerous. This can't possibly be safe for me to have this much salt. Some of you need that much salt and some of you don't. Here's the thing. Not everybody who does keto needs supplemental electrolytes, whether we're talking about sodium, magnesium, potassium, or anything else. Some people 
never have to micromanage and worry about the electrolytes at all. Some of you do, especially if you are very athletic and you sweat a lot, or you're not necessarily athletic, but you maybe work outdoors and you sweat a lot, or um, certain medications can increase your need. So things to look out for that would tell you you're not getting enough salt or sodium in your diet with keto would be um, headaches, that's probably number one, headaches, um, feeling woozy or dizzy or lightheaded, especially in the moments when you have been seated or lying down for a while and you stand up quickly. If you feel lightheaded, you feel like you're gonna pass out, you need more salt. Uh, sometimes just feeling sluggish, feeling fatigued with, with no other explanation, just feeling like kind of blah, low energy. Um, another one would be if you're at the gym and you're kind of losing oomph, like you're just, you, you don't really have the strength and the power that you should have. You're just kind of not feeling it. Salt. Sometimes also muscle cramps, but muscle cramps could be sodium. It could be magnesium. It could be potassium. So, but you could try salt. Headaches are really the biggie, the big giveaway. Now, I, I guess I could link also to some articles I've done about sodium, things that I've written about sodium. The bottom line is if, if you're doing a low carb or ketogenic diet and you've already kind of accepted and you're comfortable with the fact that they, you know, with the capital T, the experts, the authorities, they got it wrong about saturated fat and red meat and egg yolks and foods that contain cholesterol like that's not actually clogging our arteries and killing everybody and giving us all heart disease if you have kind of come around to that you have to be prepared to accept the possibility or the likelihood that salt or sodium is not inherently dangerous it is an essential nutrient you you need salt there's a reason animals seek out salt licks and they they kind of go to they gravitate towards salty water sources and stuff like that animals including human animals need sodium now there is such a thing as too much most of us never really get there healthy kidneys healthy urinary tract just filters extra out we just get rid of extra and, and we retain what we need to retain. There, there are some exceptions. Um, if, if you have high blood pressure, hypertension, or heart failure, do not pump yourself full of salt, you know, on your own. Check with your doctor, check with your nurse practitioner, PA, whoever you consult. Um, some of you, some of you should not have extra salt. But um, if, if you are taking medication, for hypertension, for high blood pressure, and you adopt a keto diet, ketogenic diets are very, very effective for lowering blood pressure all by themselves. So many people are able to kind of cut back the dose, cut back the dose, and eventually totally stop taking blood pressure medication. Of course, don't do that on your own. You would work with your doctor. But if, if you're taking a blood pressure medicine, and you adopt a keto diet or a low carb diet and you start to feel those things, headaches, dizziness, wooziness, sluggishness, fatigue, the feeling blah, that could be a sign that your blood pressure is actually starting to get too low. Because if the diet helps blood pressure all by itself and you're taking medicine, now we've got a double whammy. We might have a triple or quadruple whammy if you're on some, some people can be on three or four different medicines just for blood pressure. So we've got all this stuff pushing the blood pressure down. Now your blood pressure might be too low and that's why you get all those signs and symptoms. So, um, you know, that's, what a great reason to have to call your doctor. Like, hey, I think my blood pressure is too low. I think it's time to maybe, you know, change my meds. So you want to keep an eye on that. The fact is, and I'll, I did, I did a whole separate video on keto for hypertension and I explained why salt or sodium intake for most people, not all, most, that is not the cause of hypertension. It's actually the sugar or the, the excess carbohydrate, not just sugar. Um, there's, a, there's a researcher, James DeNicola Antonio, the author of the book, The Salt Fix. He authored a paper called The Wrong White Crystals, and they were kind of pointing the finger at sugar, sugar and refined flour and starch rather than the salt. I, I just have always loved that title, The Wrong White Crystals. So, all right. So how much salt do you need? 
more, more than you think you do if you are having those signs and symptoms. If you feel fine, then whatever amount you're getting now is fine and you don't have to track it, you don't have to scoop it out in little bits, you know. Um, if you feel fine, then however much you're getting by default in the foods you eat or however much salt you use to season your food and flavor your food, that's working for you. If you're not feeling so great, you need more. And I just, I really just kind of want to hammer home that point. Don't be afraid to use a lot if you think you need a lot. Some of you do. And I'm talking like, I don't know, a tablespoon of salt a day, not a teaspoon, a tablespoon, like a lot. Now that's, that's, that's pushing it. That's a lot, you know, especially if you think of it all in one sitting, but you know, you wouldn't do it all in one sitting. You would space it out. You could use, um, I really love the product element. It's L M N T, but it's pronounced element. There's a link below if you want to check that out or, you know, use any salt you like. You just need the sodium. It doesn't have to be fancy schmancy, you know, from this particular mine or this particular riverbed and, you know, the, the pink and the smoked and the black, like you need the sodium and that is going to be in any kind of salt. Now, you might have a favorite, like salt actually does have a little bit of flavor to it, especially if it's unrefined and it still has some other minerals in it. I don't care what you use, just get the sodium, whatever. If you prefer the pink Himalayan or you prefer the, from this particular mine, do it. You just need the sodium and don't be afraid to use a lot. But if, if you know that you are sodium sensitive, there are some people who are sensitive to the sodium and it will affect their blood pressure in, in most people, it doesn't, most people can consume however much salt they want and their body just hangs on to the right amount and gets rid of the excess. Um, what else? Well, my book is right over there. I'll just grab it. I'm going to show you the book that I just mentioned. I definitely talked about it in that video that I did on keto and hypertension, but this is it, the salt fix. So really, really good read. I really enjoyed this book. And um, they also talk about, I think they talk a little bit about the importance of, so well, the main one where they talk about the sodium, I think is the art and science of low carbohydrate performance by, you know, world renowned researchers, Stephen Finney and Jeff Olick. Because again, if you're an athlete and you're like sweating all the time and not even just sweating, just working and your muscles are like pumping all this stuff back and forth across the cell membrane, you need sodium. So, um, and, and you really athletes need sometimes what I would call a freakish amount. Don't be afraid. Um, yeah. And I meant, I meant to say when I mentioned earlier <laughs> that my the book that i did with dr westman that we, we are up for an award at the metabolic health summit i'm not speaking at that event i'm just attending that in my mind is like the world's premier academic conference for that's where like serious researchers present their stuff and it's social too they have a lot of fun social activities going on but when somebody like stephen finney speaks on stage Amy Berger doesn't speak on stage. This is like a different tier of event where like, it's just, I appreciate that I have fans. I appreciate that you enjoy me. Thank you so much. I am not quite on the level of <laughs> somebody like Stephen Finney. So let's just, you know, call it like it is. So I'll just be attending that conference. I won't be speaking, but if you're coming, say hello. Um, I think that's it. I really just kind of wanted to, because we, we see a lot of this in our, in our keto made simple masterclass, we, we help people troubleshoot a lot and, and people come to us, sorry, my hair is out of place. You know, they're still kind of talking about headaches or feeling tired or feeling dizzy. And we're like, salt, salt, salt. You know, we, we check, of course, well, do, do you have hypertension? Are you on meds? You know, and other, other medications can cause that too. So look, look at the side effects of any medicines you're on, but 
I can't tell you how many times we tell people to take salt and they're like, oh, I'm already salting my food. And I'm like, more, salt it more, you know, or use an electrolyte product. Dr. Westman's favorite go-to is just a bouillon cube because it's like dirt cheap. You can get a big container of them. It doesn't have to be organic, fancy schmancy, whatever. Just you, you need, what you need is the sodium. And a bouillon cube is a really quick, convenient, and cheap way to get it. You just put it in a mug, fill it with hot water, and you drink it down. So lots of different ways to get it very conveniently. And um, you might think you're using enough salt, but if you're having those, the headaches, the, the stuff, you're not getting enough salt. And really try it for a couple of days, see what happens, you know, and, and you, you will usually feel better pretty quickly. I want to say almost within minutes, but maybe not that quickly, but sometime relatively soon, you will feel different slash better. So, and, and so you'll know, you'll either feel better or you won't. And if you do, well, guess what? That was the answer. You did need more salt, more sodium than you thought you did. And if it doesn't help, then it's something else. And what that something else might be, maybe I'll talk about some other time, but bottom line, don't be afraid of sodium. If you're all ready, you think you're using enough, but you still feel kind of crappy, use more. And don't be afraid to use more. But if you're on blood pressure meds, heart failure situation, work with your, you know who, your medical professional. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you again so very much for the beautiful outpouring of support for me and i mean above all for for honoring dr hallberg's memory so um thank you for that vote for the book vote for dr westman check out the lipedema and lymphedema virtual symposium and i'll see you next time take care